You probably know Namecheap as a domain registrar, but did you know they also offer extensive hosting services? Yeah, it has over 11 million users, so it must be doing something good, right? Right? Hey, I'm Chase. Welcome back to my humble cyber news lair, your source for actually good hosting reviews. Let's answer the question of whether Namecheap hosting is any good. Can it offer good performance? What about support? Let's find that out together. Make sure to keep me company till the end. There are some interesting things I found. But first, I wanted to test the performance since this is a cheap provider and they aren't usually known for great loading times. After a few GT metrics tests, Namecheap's largest contentful paint, or LCP, was 1.1 seconds. That's 1.4 seconds faster than the 2.5 industry standard. LCP doesn't mean your site loaded completely, just that the bulk of it is loaded and your visitors can interact with your content. And just FYI, I've attached all the test data in the description below. As for full load time, it was just 1.3 seconds, so no problems with loading time so far. Let's look at uptime since Namecheap guarantees you 100% uptime on all shared hosting plans, even the cheapest one. It turns out my website was online 99.87% of the time during the three months of testing. That's one hour a month of downtime. Not great, not great at all. Considering that the industry standard uptime is 9.9%. Don't get me wrong, this isn't the worst thing ever, but it's definitely not great when you fail to meet industry standards and your own promises. Next, let's turn up the heat and stress test this baby. First, I sent 50 virtual users to my website to see how Namecheap handles large traffic spikes. Keep in mind, 50 users at the same time is a lot of users. Some large well-known websites only get 30 to 40 users browsing simultaneously max. So after 10 minutes resulted in 3,000 HTTP failures and a pretty unstable response timeline. So duh, Namecheap's cheapest plan is not meant for large traffic spikes. Let's test a bit more realistic scenario. This time, the same test, but with 25 users. There were 51 failed HTTP requests and the average response time was smoother. It's still not perfect, but decent. So it can handle a bit more traffic, but it's mostly for small sites. I'm gonna be honest, Namecheap's custom control panel works fine, but it won't win any prizes for UX design. For server control and more complex tasks, you use cPanel. If you're a fan of this channel, you know my position on cPanel. It's old, bulky, and not that sexy looking. The custom dashboard itself is also a bit meh and confusing. If you don't want to use WordPress, you can use the website builder tool. It has a good selection of templates and its drag and drop capabilities make it relatively easy to use. It's nothing to write home about, but it will work just fine for beginners. With Namecheap, you can expect 24 seven customer support via live chat and tickets. It's not bad, but it has a few flaws. With live chat, you get a quick response, but agents tend to regurgitate what's already written in the knowledge base. So I would suggest Namecheap to users that don't need support that often and mostly do things on their own. Overall, Namecheap support is responsive, but their responses aren't perfect. It's an industry standard by now to offer a free domain name for a year with more expensive shared hosting plans. While Namecheap does that, it also offers less attractive .site or .online domain names with even the cheapest plan. Sick of providers limiting to only one website? Well, Namecheap allows you to host up to three websites on their most affordable plan. All Namecheap plans come with unmetered bandwidth, so Namecheap won't charge you for increased traffic. As for the storage space, the plans come with 20 gigabytes unlimited and 50 gigabytes SSD respectively. Now you might be wondering, wait, why does the most expensive plan come with a limitation while the previous plan was unlimited? Well, it's because of inodes. It's always because of inodes. The two cheapest plans have a hard limit of 300,000 inodes, but the last plan comes with a 600,000 inode limit. Still, the inode limit is good and the unlimited SSD sounds nice. Well, there's a final restriction. You can't have more than 10 gigabytes of media. This includes videos, images, GIFs, databases, or ISO files. So if you were expecting to upload hundreds of high quality photos to your channel, you might wanna look for a different provider. When it comes to pricing, Namecheap lives up to its name. Shared hosting starts at $1.58 a month, and you can also buy a managed WordPress hosting called EasyWP. The prices fluctuate, so make sure you check the latest pricing details in the description below. Many hosting providers try to lure you in with rock bottom prices for your initial purchase and then jack the prices up three or four times. Namecheap renewal prices are around two times higher than the original price, so that's a minimal increase compared to their competitors. Okay, 
So there's one last weird thing. You get to choose from three data centers before you buy their hosting services. Nothing strange so far, but oddly enough, the data center you choose will affect both the price and features available. Yeah, it's not just about performance or your audience. Like, the US data center is normally priced, but the UK and EU plans are a dollar more expensive. I believe this increase is likely due to stricter privacy rules in Europe, but there's no clear statement from Namecheap. Even weirder is the cloud storage feature. If you choose the US data center, you'll only get this feature with their stellar business plan. The EU data center includes it in all their plans, and there is no cloud storage in any of the UK plans. It's just weird and confusing, seemingly for no reason. So we learned a few things. First, Namecheap is, well, cheap. You can get hosting plans for less than $2 a month. In terms of performance, usability, and features, Namecheap does well, but it's nothing truly impressive. You can get similar or better packages with Hostinger or Bluehost. On the downside, there is a price increase on data centers, quite a lot of restrictions, and not the best overall hosting quality. My recommendation? Use Namecheap only for small or personal projects, and it will work like a charm. I like to think of using Namecheap like using two-in-one shampoo and shower gel. It works all right, but it isn't great quality shampoo, and it's not the best shower gel. But what do you think about Namecheap? If you've made it to this point, congratulations! Your reward? You're allowed to like this video and even subscribe to our channel. But really, I always appreciate your support. See you in the next one.